Welcome to today's um, podcast. Um, we're here with Mr. Uzi Ben. Um, our topic for today is on relationship with God and religion. Welcome, Mr. Uzi Ben. Thank you. Uh, my name is Naomi. And um, please, can you introduce yourself to us so mm-hmm. we can know you? Uzi Ben. The Uzi Ben <laughs> podcast. <laughs> The Uzi Ben podcast. Okay, thank you and welcome. Thank, thank you, Mr. Uzi Ben. Thank you for your time. Well, I have some questions and um, pertaining our relationship with God and um, religion. You know, so many, we've seen so many of your videos where you talk about relationship with God, spirituality, religion. So um, we just want to know, we want you to educate us more on um, the relationship when it comes to God okay. and um, want you to educate us more on Christianity, on Islam, on Buddhism, because we, we come to understand that you're a free thinker. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. I'm not a free thinker. Okay, you're not a free thinker. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think maybe that's the most um, misconception close, many, close many of to, us have. Okay. Close to um, describing my my stand in religion. So, okay. Go on with the question. Okay, close to re- Okay, all right. Thank you very much, yeah. sir. Well, my first question is, how would you define religion? And in your own view, what is religion? Okay, um, religion is uh, more of like um, uh, a kind of, uh, most people will say it's a way of life, but in my own view, I would say a system where people are programmed to think a certain way, okay. act a certain way, mm-hmm. and then believe in a certain way. And the majority of the time, and a religion set to make people have um, faith in a kind of reward okay. of an afterlife or a punishment of an afterlife. And why we can generally say religion is a set, is a system whereby, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, um, people are meant to, to believe in a higher power. Okay. That rewards them when they do good, okay. and then punish them when they do bad, and um, underneath are going to be like laws, rules, and, and regulation norms that guide the way they eat, the way they live, the way they communicate, their belief system, and, and their faith. Okay, okay. So thank you for that. So to your own view, um, you've just explained to us what religion is yeah and okay what you think religion mm. is thank you very much um now my next question is do all religion leads to god because you just talked about punishment the um um way people live mm-hmm. so now if we're, if we're talking about the punishment and the way people live in your own view when it comes to religion mm. does this now lead to god does this religion lead to god you have to be specific. What religion are you talking about? Now, in all of this religion, be it a Christian, be it Muslim, mm-hmm. be it Buddhism, does all of this religion lead to God? This, does all of this relationship lead to God? Good. Now, your your question, if I have to put it where in the way I will understand, is that how does this religion lead to lead God? Lead to God, yes. Good. Now, the question here is that we don't even know if they are leading to God. Wow. As you can see, I'm also a founder of a, a new age religion, okay. the watered religion. Okay. And um, each of um, the dispensation that have passed, every messenger that have risen, every religious leader that have risen, have this conviction or a kind of experience of God. And so that experience is what they put into teaching, is what they put into dogma, is what they put into laws, and rules and regulations that that govern themselves and their followers and so whether a religion leads to god or not is dependent on the messenger of that religion or the leader of that religion of the prophet of that religion okay. you understand that and why let me use for example islam for example the messenger and the prophet of islam is prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
And this great prophet lead, led a life of um, a pious life, according to the Islamic history. And um, not just the Islamic history, there are world history that look at the lifestyle of this great prophet of, of Islam. And looking at the experiences, history surrounding the, the foundation of, of the religion, and also have its own ties with um, older religion like Judaism and Christianity, you find out that it is circling around the same monotheism, the one God of the Jew and the supposed one God of Christianity. Okay. And so there is a conviction. Mm -hmm. That conviction comes from his visit to the mountain, having a revel getting a um, revelation from God through the angel Jubri, well, angel Gabriel, and then some miracles that followed afterward afterwards you can see the miracle of splitting the moon the miracle of healing the jew that was uh, constantly abusing him the the other teachings and pious life he, the life he lead he led you get it now, now when we go to christianity for example okay. it's obvious we know that jesus christ is not the prophet of christianity why yes. would you say that no, yeah he didn't found christianity christianity okay. was Christianity started 30 years after he had gone. But we we, we all have um, an understanding that um, Christ started Christianity. No. Jesus started Christianity. No, he didn't start. Suits follows after he has gone. No. His followers picked up. So no. why would you say Christ is not the founder of Christianity? Jesus Christ did not found Christianity because Just. Jesus Christ was a Jew okay. who was trying to remind the Jews the original laws and the way of life as prescribed by God to the children of Israel. So what what is the what is the way of life? Good. What is he the was way making of life? them understand that their patriarchs were not living a life of hypocrisy. They were living a life of sacrifice. They were living a, they were living a life of love. They were living a life of going to the synagogue and actually worshiping God and not going there to show themselves that they are rich. And that was why you find out that he went to the synagogue to scatter money, to scatter the whole synagogue. And that was why he was constantly saying, Oh, you hypocrites. Oh, you scribes and Pharisees. Okay. Your heart is away from God while your body is around here. Okay, so if I can understand you very well, you just said something about, um, you just explained the, the reason to me why you feel Christ is not the founder of Christianity. I'm not done. Okay. I don't feel that Christ is not the founder of Christianity. It is evidented in the Bible. Okay. It's sure that Jesus Christ did not found Christianity. Rather, Jesus Christ was a Jew who believed in the teachings of the Jew, who wanted to reform the Israelites, the, Jew, the Jewish people, to follow the ways of God with absolute wisdom and love. And that's why he told them, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And to tell you that among all, the greatest of all the law right now is love your neighbor as yourself. And so Christ's mission on earth was not just to, like what he said, he said, I have not come for the whole world. I have come for the lost sheep of what Israel. Yeah. The case of when the woman came to meet him and said, please have mercy upon me. My, my daughter is ill. He said, I, I didn't come for everyone. I cannot take the, the food meant for the kings and the prince and the children and then give to dogs and the woman said even the dogs can they eat from the crumbs that fall from the table yeah. and then you find out that the mission of christ on earth is that people can still benefit from the the grace of god upon the children of the israelite via faith okay and so christ did not start a new religion rather christ was a messenger according to the bible to open judaism which is not judaism as per the religion itself but to open the love and the grace of god to all mankind starting from the children of israel and so if we were to go by the teachings and the way of life christians are supposed to be jews by extension of faith and so you find out that Christ did more miracles to Gentiles than the Jews. Why? Because the Jews did not do what? They didn't believe him. 
the bible said that they were saying is this not jesus christ the son of the capital the capital is it not the brother the sisters the married all of them we know them say yeah where did he have such authority, authority yeah. because now he was not only telling them about the love of god extended to the household of israel but now in extension to the supposed sinners to the jews and so he found out that he didn't found Christianity. Rather, he was leading a life that he wanted the Jew to follow and the Gentiles also. And so when he left, you found out that the Bible said in it was in Antioch. Yes. The people were seeing the way these people that follow the teachings of Christ, the way they were living their life. They were not the hundred percent Jews, they were accepting the Gentiles, they were giving to the poor, they were being kind to the widows. And they said, these people, they don't act like Jews, despite the fact that they are Jews. They are leading a life of the prophet, the man, Jesus Christ. And so that's what the Bible said. It was there they were first called the followers of Christ, Christ okay. which the white man Not changed. changed to what? Christian. Okay, so to you, the white man... Not to me. Was where the one that incorporated the, the word name. Christian is not an Arabic word, it's not an Aramaic word, it's not an Hebrew word, okay. it's, a, it's an English word, it's an English word translated from Latin Christus, okay, translated from Latin. So, the people of those that were following Christ that were called the followers of Christ because of the things they were do doing, we are not actually called. Christians, they will only say they behave like that man calls Jesus Christ. Okay, you get it now. And the word Christ is not a Hebrew word, neither is it an Aramaic word. The word Christ was will refer to Messiah. So if they were called originally, those that followed were called. They, they may they must have been called the followers of the man they called. Messiah, they act like the man Jesus. So, if Christianity were to have a real name, it should have been called Jesusians. <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny name. Yes, it's, a, funny it's, name. it's not a funny name, it's the name of the prophet Jesusians. Um, but they decided to call them Christians okay. from the English translation of the word Christos, which is what a savior. The English, so if Christians were actually to choose a name for their religion. Is not the name the white man gave it. We are supposed to be what? Messiahs or Jesusians. So if I know that you can see at the end of the day, Jesus did not found Christianity. That's why the fact that it was written in the Bible, Peter, upon this statement, I will build my church. And this is where most Christians find it wrong. The word church was translated from the original word, the called out. Meaning, these were the Jews that God has called out to lead a life that the forefather, the patriarch, had lived. And so you can see Christ was more of like the one that was trying to segregate the Jewish people. Now, you may call yourself a Jew, but you are not the main Jew. And say, he said, he said what do they call me? He said, they call you the son of God. Mm. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed it, but God. He said, on this statement, Peter, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. I don't know if I was able to. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, you were able to throw more light on on that question. And um, it, it leads me to my next question, which is, uh, I want to ask you, um, what's the reason of our existence? The purpose of our existence, why are we alive today? That's, yes. that's what the question is, right? Now, Science has been able to come up with some Charles Darwin's theory, the evolution, the Big Bang theory, and then Christianity. And let me, let me not use the word Christianity, religion, because religion, when we talk yeah. about Christianity, even Islam, they have similar belief, belief system. system yeah. Good. And that's why, and in the water, we have a course called comparative religion, okay. focusing on Islam and Christianity, the similarity between the, should I call it similarity? It's actually one religion. Just, okay. just for actually one religion. So you're trying to tell me now that in the water, 
you believe in both being a Christian and both being a Muslim. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the water we have a course okay. that talks about comparative religion. Okay. Having Christianity and Islam as a case study, having Buddhism and Hinduism as a case study, having Zoroastrianism and and um, Judaism as a case study. So comparative religion is studying two religions and comparing them, their similarity. So when you talk about the essence of our life today, mm-hmm. what are we talking about? Why are you alive? Yeah. And I do tell a lot of people, so people will come out, what is my purpose in life? Mm-hmm. As a spiritual leader, people check me up, sir, what, 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 what does the Spirit say that I'm going to be tomorrow? What, what is my purpose? How, how do I fulfill my destiny? You find out at the end of the day, I tell a lot of them, there is no purpose for anyone. There is no man on earth that is born on this earth and it's defined that for example uh miss maru maru born on the 14th of april 1988 you are born to be a, a medical doctor to save life no okay good why would Each, you say that no, I, I'm, I don't have a reason to say that i'm, I'm, I'm speaking from true revelations deep spiritual wisdom if i if i if i may come in um while growing up um religion has made us to understand that every man born on earth is with a purpose yes but right now you're trying to tell me that there's no such thing now i call that religious fake news so i want to debunk it really yes Why? there is no one on earth that is born with a purpose but circumstances can happen that can alter your destination of life yeah. but now if i say there is no purpose it means why am i a spiritual leader why am i leading the water good, religion good now this is it every single person on earth was created and made to make an impact in this world okay can you please throw more light on on that the impact i mean here is every soul yourself myself the director herself everyone reda dominic zara danny all of them put together they are made they were created by god they are on this earth for one specific purpose you just said there's no purpose i'm going to again okay to make manifest the glory of god Mm. and what is the glory of god to make life easy for your fellow neighbor and so okay. you are created to be a billionaire. I a billionaire. You a prophet. Myself a prophet. Everyone was created with all the abilities to be a president, to be a governor, to be anything you want. You know what I'm saying now? Okay. So each and every one of us, we don't have a specific thing we should be in life. Rather, we are given unlimited possibilities to be whatever thing we want to be. Okay. Now, look at what religion does. Religion decided to narrow us to one specific, okay. which limits your ability to do extraordinary. Instead of religion to teach us the truth, which is being preached every day, we all hear it. Akalaka. Your destiny is in whose hand? What? Your destiny is in your own hands. Uh-huh. Your destiny is in your own hands. Your life, okay. your purpose, the day you will die, the day. The only thing that God, the knowledge that was taken from you as a human being, is the knowledge of the day you will die and the knowledge of the day you will be born but the day you will die is an infinite possibility you might die today tomorrow next but at the end of the day it leads us back to the question our essence on life which is why i said your essence and your destiny is your own hands Mm. So the destiny, destiny does not say you are going to live up to 100 years. So because destiny is in your own hands, 
you decided to take alcohol, 70% alcohol, you finish your whole bottle, and you now sit in front of a car, and you are driving 200 kilometers, mm. because your brain is working faster than your mind and your hand and everything. What happened? You have an accident, and you died. And you say, oh, it's the will of God. It's not the will of God. Mm. You took your destiny in your own hands. Mm. You decided to live a life without a purpose. And you died on time. And so I tell, I tell a lot of people that there are a lot of people that are in the grave today that are not supposed to be dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But because they decided to live a life without a purpose, they are dead. And so you want to be a medical doctor. It's in your hands. Yeah. Now, our purpose now is more than 90% being shaped by religion based on greed, selfishness. Like the Bible said, the kingdom of God, right from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and only the violent took it by force. And so the society is shaping us. And so you see our director today never wanted to be a, a director of a show. And then after doing this, the work is beautiful. He pick up his, her phone and go to the internet and find out that the friend that they finished secondary school together is doing well in acting. He said, I think I, I think I have a knack for acting. Mm. And so we find out that our society is constantly shaping our children. Mm. When, when your child was born, he had the possibility. He was Spider-Man. He was a soldier. He was a medical doctor. He's a, he was a pastor, a spiritual leader. He was almost everything. Today you wake up and your son, you say, Mommy, I'm a pastor. The other time, Mommy, I'm a medical doctor. Mommy, I'm a soldier. He had the possible, he had the ability to be whatever thing he wants to be. But as he begins to grow up, his society begins to shape his mind. He's not deciding, if I be a doctor, will I make it? My friend just bought a car. Medical doctor cannot give me money. I can't be a lecturer. And so your essence on earth is defined by you. And this is as a result of how you relate with people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, at the same time, is how spiritual you become. Okay, okay. I did biochemistry in school. I studied different business courses and, and every other thing that I've come across. I, I did religion, I, I did human psychology, organizational behavior. But all of these, I have more than 50% in all of it. And you know the word, you say, a, a, a jack of all trade, all trade. master that's of all world, none. none. But you guys know that that's that's not the whole whole quote, right? Okay. Can the the full the full quote is, um, jack of all trade, master of none, right? He said, but far better than master of one. Oh. That's the full that's the full quote. Okay. You are jack of all trade. Master, master of, of none, one. but okay. better than master of one. One, okay. Because you find out at the end of the day, when you come to where people are, are, are shooting, you have a, not, a little knowledge, knowledge of camera. It. You'll be able to do something. You go to, you'll be able to do something. Mm -hmm. So you are better than a master of one who will come to a place that they just, need just and he's useless. Yeah. You get what I'm saying now? And so you find out at the end of the day, I am a jack of all trades. I decided to focus on one, which is to educate men the essence of their living, which is what? Pure spirituality. Okay. And so if, if I may ask you what is your, if, if I may answer you correctly, your full purpose on earth is on how you can harness, harness mm. your spiritual life and grow spiritually. Because by growing spiritually, you are able to, you are able to filter the, the noise in your environment okay. and decide which you want to master. You just talked about um, the essence of our existence, and um, you tr you were trying to throw more light on being spiritual. Now, it's this um, being spiritual is leading me to my next question. I want to ask you, Mr. Okay. Ozi Ben. Okay. Um, I want to ask you a question. What is our purpose of being spiritual, and what is the gain we have? What what gain have we in being spiritual and identifying ourselves to the will of God? Now. Um, Sorry, there's some persons that will say there's a will for every man. Okay. Now, I want to know that will for every man by mm -hmm. God. What is our gain? Okay. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't get the question. Okay. Now, if I may ask you now, 
what is the purpose of being spiritual you just say something about spirituality oh, okay that's what i'm trying to ask so you. your question is more of like um the benefit of being spiritual yes okay, what's good. the benefit of being, being spiritual? spiritual okay spirituality over the years have cut across different concept based on different religion ethnic belief system okay and society you understand now mm. right now what is on the um mainstream is african being too spiritual mm. but we tend to forget the time when the european were were very very spiritual but their spirituality was focused on a different perspective entirely and so the benefit of being spiritual is it's the calmness that comes with it and i said when i see a spiritual person i see i see someone who is um who has um love for humanity because spirituality exposes you to pure humanity pure love you find that at the, at the end of the day at the end of the day one of the one of the beauty of being spiritual is your love for humanity because humanity is is more of um a speck a speck in the spectrum of general spirituality mm. is that little that little grain in that big fruit of humanity and so that big fruit of what of of um of um the spiritual world Okay. so humanity itself is a little seed in the big fruit of the whole universe wow. and so for you to be able to assess the whole universe you must first assess humanity and by assessing humanity it's what we call spiritual journey mm. the calmness going to the sea going to the forest having a quiet time with yourself treating the orphans well, treating the widows well being nice and being in support of programs and movement that promotes green earth that save the mother earth mm. these are all work of spirituality so one of the greatest benefits we had, i do tell people is the ability to have a clear mind a clear conscience about how each and every one of us should be treated mm. especially how what was given to us the mother earth where we live how it should be treated so spirituality um, comes from different spectrum different perspective depending on the individual you see someone who goes to mecca and sees that as a, a journey of spirituality and and, and someone here in nigeria is pouring libation to the gods of the land as as a journey of spirituality mm. and the benefit itself may cut across different purposes based on individuals but i would want to say that the climax of it is how well is humanity being treated thank you very much mr uzi ben yeah. this um, topic is getting interesting um now um please kindly tell us um man's relationship with god and himself which is more important because um, the reason I'm asking you this is um, so many persons, when it comes to their relationship with God and their neighbor, mm -hmm. they feel the relationship is, with God is very more important than the relationship they have with their neighbor. Okay. That is why you could see somebody, be it a Christian or a Muslim. Okay, now, uh, um, the reason I'm asking this question is, something happened i sent um a daughter of mine to get something for me and um when she got to the shop she was told i, I think this period is the period where uh, muslims are doing their fasting mm -hmm. now um the the lady told her that um she she's going out for prayers mm -hmm. that this is the fasting period and she she's going out for prayers and what she was supposed to do for her, for my daughter was so very important and it it's something that could help that can help me at that time as a human being and she preferred 
to going go for, prayers for a prayer at that than particular time that, than offering that help that's the reason why i'm asking you what the relationship with um, man has with god and with himself which is more important um as for your question this is the same thing the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he himself preached against even the prophet jesus christ and other prophets and even myself one of the key foundation of islam faith zakah fasting giving to the poor and loving god believing in all the prophets including jesus christ now in the life of the prophet there are several hadiths hadiths are referred to the teachings of the prophet okay and most muslims don't do they don't know this they don't know this they clearly don't understand the true meaning of islam mm. so just like jesus christ was going about destroying the temple mm. because they were after religious activity rather than spiritual edification and awakening he said your heart is far from god mm. he said with your body you come before me he said but your heart is far and prophet muhammad also warned against religious people and that was what the, the, the quran said he said god is unknowing mm. now that lady i can vividly say the blessing that was meant for her that day she lost it why would you say that because an act of kindness is an act of worship mm. that single kindness would have covered the whole of the fasting of that day but she lost it wow the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam preached mainly on kindness and one of the greatest tools he used in evangelizing in bringing people to islam when you read different hadiths and the true history of islam i tell you all people when you want to talk about islam please i'm sorry my muslim brothers in nigeria don't look at them i'm sorry don't look at them wow don't look at them why would you say that <laughs> i've met several muslims in nigeria mm. i was once a muslim okay and a lot of them are saying your faith is not strong your faith, let it be my faith is not strong and that was why i couldn't continue in islam and is it my fault it is not my fault it is my fellow muslim brothers and sisters who were unable to become an example of the prophet to me and this happened cut across all religions you cannot call me to say i should be a muslim and you're not leading the life of islam because unknown to you i have read about the life of the prophet and right now i live a better life as a muslim than you who has a black spot on the head i don't know if i told you one time mm. and a lot of my friends the moment i start praying the five day prayer all i need is three days to go to the mosque my forehead will be darker than someone that i've been praying for 10 years if you guys want us to do it you can comment below and say uzi ben we want you to pray for the next one week you will see my next video my forehead is black so now what's the significance i'm going over here yeah. i'm going over here when i became a muslim prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam appeared to me and gave me a staff wow yes wow. and when i woke up from the dream i called my muslim brother i said i had a dream and i saw the prophet give me a staff but i knew he was a prophet i did not see the head but i saw a man walking on the desert and gave me a staff he said follow me and some of you say ah, but why are you doing water thing and you are going to the water to go and worship i don't worship juju is the same allah i called on by the sea just as prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam call upon god in the desert and jesus christ called upon god in the wilderness and prophet abraham called upon god in the desert and Oshofa call upon God by the waters. And Babalola call upon God on the mountain. And Tibi Joshua call upon God here on the mountain. Say I'm calling upon God, the ancient spirit, in the waters. Okay. Prophet Muhammad called God Allah, according to the Arabic. Jesus Christ referred to God as Allah, according to Arama the Hebrew. 
Or Shofar refer to God as what? Olorun. According to his, um, his own um, tribe. Same thing, myself. I'm referring to God as the, as, as the ancient spirit. She's like, I don't want to call him Morgane. Because mm -hmm. number one, I don't want to bring ethnicity into the watered religion. Oh. oh. Now, now, let me tell you something. You see that act of the woman was barbaric, alien to Islam. Let me tell you. There was a story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a case of a Jewish woman who would take death and put in the front of the Prophet's house. The woman was a Jew. She will wake up in the morning just to mock the Prophet for saying, worship only one God. God is the right way. He would, she would take death. You know death? Yes. Dirty, yes. dirty. Yes. And put in front of the Prophet's house. You could, uh, you could imagine that the prophet will not be alone. There will be a lot of people around him, both the wife and followers of Islam will be around him. And the prophet will say, leave her alone. She will take the death in the middle of the night, put in front of the prophet's house. The prophet will wake up in the morning, take the death, throw away. The woman did it the second time, the third time, she kept doing it. And one day, mm. the prophet woke up and in front of the prophet's house, there was no death. Mm. There was no death at all. And the prophet looked at it. Mm. And Alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah. There's no death for me to pack today. The day passed. The following day, he woke up. Mm. And there was no death there. Ah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Today, there is no death for me to pack. The third day, <laughs> there was no death. And he looked at, he could see that the woman's house was not looking the way it used to be. Did she travel? Is she not in town? She decided to go and check up on the woman. Only to find out that the woman was severely sick unto death. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the great prophet of Islam, knelt down. Allah. You are the great God. Show to her that you sent me and heal her of this infirmity. Subhanallah. The woman received her healing instantly. Mm. And when the woman got her healing, do you know what the woman did? No. He renounced Judaism and became a Muslim. She did the Shahada and she converted to Islam. Oh. Did the prophet use sword and put on, on his neck to cut his neck because he was not a Muslim? No. no. Did the prophet went and raided his house? No. Rather, it was an act of kindness mm. that the prophet used in converting the woman to Christianity, to, to Islam. Okay. And this is the same thing the prophet preached. The okay. prophet said, you guys hear of the word jihad, jihad. Jihad doesn't necessarily mean go and kill people. This, that, that's what is, the hadith said. The greater jihad is a jihad against your own self. Those things that you crave for, can you destroy it for the love of a God? Okay, okay. And so for that woman not to do that kindness to you, she has lost a whole lot. Okay. God bless now, you. Now, um, um, you said so much about um, Islam from the example I give to you, you said so much. Now, if you as a former Muslim know about And also this, a former Christian. And also a former Christian, sorry, sir. And, and also a, former, a Satanist. And also a Satanist. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, that's very interesting. And um, you know, okay, let me um, just channel on being a Muslim, a former Muslim, and you know about all this. Are you trying to tell me that Muslims don't know about these stories. They don't know about this act of kindness by the prophet they believe in. Okay, now. There was a day I came on TikTok and I met a young man. And I told the young man, I was trying to explain something. And the young man said, put out a very... There is something about most Muslims. They know how to mock you. Mm. The moment you have no full knowledge... Something about this most majority of the Muslims I've met is 
the moment you say you are a Muslim, they expect you to have 100% knowledge of everything about Islam. But they don't understand by being a Muslim is mainly on your character and how you treat God and your neighbor, not the knowledge inside of you, but rather the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the prophets of Islam, which is Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Jesus Christ, um, Abraham, Jacob, David, and all of them. And so when I came on, uh, uh, online years ago, he said, how many, he used the word, how many Zaka are in Ruku? Mm. He is the most stupid Muslim I've ever seen in my life. Wow. And I purposely failed it. I said, that should be two. And all of, all of them were laughing. He said, it's not a Muslim. It's not a Muslim. I said, you see, you expect a Nigerian who has never been to an Arabic college to learn Arabic as a language for me to be a Muslim mm. is appalling. That's the criteria. Is racism. Mm. I call that religious racism. I have the Holy Quran and I read the English translation of Ali. Finish. That's all I need. When you read the story of the prophet, why he was alive, he had so many translators around him who were translated to other languages whenever he was teaching. Learning Arabic is not a religious recommendation for you. The reason why learning arabic was recommended to most muslims in the time of the past was that so that people don't change the words of the quran like what happened to the bible okay and so it was paramount that the quran remain the original arabic word but then we now had transliteration and we have translation you know what's called transliteration? Mm -hmm. Transliteration is in this so-called language, you use the word Odeme e Victor. Yeah, yeah. Transliteration is writing O D M. -E. Why translation is my, my name, name is yeah. Victor. And so the Quran has the transliteration of the Arabic word. And so you see what you see something Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabil Alami. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yamidi. Idinas um Iyakana Buduwa Iyakana Stakin. Idina Sirata Mustakin Sirata. Ladina, I'm telling him. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like enchanting to me. No, yes, because you don't understand the language. Yes, yes. And when you see a, an Arabic man speaking, he still speaks the same word. It's like me saying, uh, I don't understand he oh. <laughs> I don't I don't yes, yes. I don't understand Ibo. So an Ibo man will understand. There was one day I walked to a man, I said, Ogini Kamilowa, Chine can buy your oku. Funny. And the man said, ah, what have I done? That snake will mock that God doesn't send fire, fire. on him. Whereas to me, I thought she can admire your is God bless you. <laughs> then now he says no, he said that's not God I say God to use fire to burn me. <laughs> I thought I was saying God bless. He said, no, he said she can go And so what I read is actually the Arabic of the Fatiha, the first chapter of the Holy Quran. Mm. You find out that now, major because they made the Arabic to be something, a Nigerian boy mm. from Kanu will recite the Quran from Fatiha to high class. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alami. Down to the last. Mm. And then you tell him, what is Bismillah? He will say, mm, I don't know, it's Bismillah. He does not know. Oh. He does not know the, yes, does not know the meaning of the word Bismillah. So, 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 are you trying? So, if they I, memorize and recite without the meaning, now, and so he will the the the, the person we read to Imran, mm. Isa, and does not know Isa is Jesus Christ. Mm. Imran, he does not know that Imran is a uh, Miriam is Mary, the mother of Jesus has recited the Quran from beginning to the end, but does not know that. Muhammad was sallallahu alaihi wasallam was mentioned three times in the Bible, and Jesus Christ was mentioned twenty five times in the Bible. He has read the Arabic version of the Quran, mm -hmm. but does not realize that the Quran also said, "If you do not understand what I am saying, go and ask the people of the book, which is Christians." 
Wow. Yes, the Quran said, if Muslims don't understand the misery of what is being revealed, mm -hmm. let them go and mm -hmm. ask the people mm -hmm. of the book, mm -hmm. which is what? Christians. Is a lie. The wow. people of the book is not Christian. Wow. The people of the book is the Jews. Because Judaism, we are the first people, after they came from Israel, they embed the act of recording history and writing. Whoa. So they were exposed to a book. So you come across the word papayas. The history of the Bible is papayas. So you can have the story of Abraham. They were being written and documented. So they were called the people of the book. That was why the Jews were constantly castigated. How can you see them be writing your history? Whoa. And that is the major reason why the Israelites have the only oldest history and the Egyptians and the Ethiopians. But because they were men that were keeping history. So when the Quran said the people of the book, Christians say, eh, they said most of you don't know Islam. Go and ask the Christians. Who told you? Book were already existed before Christianity started. Christianity was just 2,000 years ago. Mm. Christianity is younger than Zoroastrianism. It's younger than Buddhism. It's younger than... Hinduism is younger than <laughs> it should do easy. In fact, the youngest one we can say among the old religion, Islam is the youngest about a thousand six hundred years ago. Because Prophet Muhammad started is calling six hundred years after Jesus Christ had gone. How many, how many, a hundred years is a millennium, right? Yeah, just six millennium. Wow. So when the Quran said, Ask people of the book, was referring to those the people of the book were those who believe in the history. And so because this was a man that was teaching a history he never read was revealed to him by the how can somebody from Mecca be telling me who's the mm. know this that Bible fell in Araya hey <laughs> and you see people of Mecca say, oh God how did you know Bible fell in Araya he said if you do not believe me they are going to ask the people of Isoko yeah. and they actually came to you and they found out that he said yes and that was why they were marvel how did you know of this and that's why I tell people one of the criteria to know someone is actually called of God the person is giving the hidden knowledge of the spirit and so when I came online and said Olo who came to visit me and told me I am not fighting you what would people say ah we said he's worshipping Juju no we're, we're going to that and that was why they said Prophet Muhammad he was he was a madman. And Jesus Christ was called what? A madman. And Abraham was called what? A madman. Elijah was obviously was a madman. Shadrach, Bishak, and Abednego. They are the most maddest people you can ever see. Because they show the fire than buy into the image. Hmm. Alhamdulillah. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Eh. Very interesting. Thank very, you. Very, very interesting. Thank you. It, um, is it's raining fire here yeah, guys <laughs> <laughs> it's raining fire yeah seriously um and i'm enjoying i'm enjoying the whole thing Thank i'm you. enjoying this whole thing it's um it's it's a, it's an eye opener um and um, for you to learn for you to learn about religion for you to learn about the purpose of your existence you have to like the reminder i've seen some of his video who always say you don't have to be biased when it comes to learning about religion you have to be open-minded be you a christian be you a muslim you have to be open-minded because when you are biased you you tend to like no it's not supposed to be so no it's not supposed to go this way i know many many people that are seeing this video will say ah but she's a christian why is she nodding her head and them um, agreeing to everything he's saying and why is she why is she um um sitting close to a man all dressed with um, carries with beads and she um portraying one i have to portray one because i have to be like you are my wife he just said i'm his wife i'm not his wife i'm his girlfriend <laughs> either way you're my girlfriend <laughs> all right thank you guys thank you, you. have no choice thank you <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, and and I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying myself. I know the director is enjoying herself also. She she just gave me a hand now that she's enjoying herself. Thank you, Mr. Uzi Ben. Thank you very very you. very much. Now um, I have um, you've talked about the Muslim. I gave you an instance of a Muslim. I know we in Christianity we still have people like that. I've seen people like that who are so religion. We call them religion fanatics. You remember the, you remember the story of the Bible, the Good Samaritan. Yeah, they yeah. had to leave the dead man 
I'm going to the church. Yes. Why the Samaritan? And, and, yes. And in this our dispensation, very in, common. In this our dispensation, I've seen a lot, a lot of people that would rather go to church and sit down comfortably than helping their neighbor. They would rather use. And they will tell you. They would rather use, use God billions. Says. Okay. They would rather use billions to build universities that more than eighty percent of the church members cannot go, mm -hmm. rather than to use the billion. To build housing projects. I can say it and I'm saying with every sincerity of my heart. Mm. No religious leader that own a church today. That will tell me that the money he has today. They are building estates now that nobody can say. Matthew uh, Oshimowolo. Uh, uh, Oshimowolo. Oshimowolo. You look, look at the estate. Amen. And we have to become a fake prophet and start giving people fake prophecy. Tell them to be to, to come and start paying me a huge amount of money and do a lot of evil for me to be able to acquire money to buy a unit of that estate. Wow. I can tell you that majority of people that we will stay in that estate are not going to be Christians. But it's going to take money from them. Then you will stand up and tell me, or oh, David Yodobo. Or what do you call Redeem Christian Church? Will tell me that the money they use in building churches and universities is God that blessed them. It's obvious mm -hmm. that you are running an institution that the government does not tax, so you get your money one hundred percent. They don't tax churches, so you don't call that a blessing. It's not a blessing. You are, that's business now. Wow. Yes. Me, I tell people to pay me money for me to do consultation for them. Pay me money to speak to my time. You want me to do ritual for you? Pay me money. Okay. I am coming up to say you pay me money. I do it for you, but they will tell you no. You don't need to pay us any money. But they indirectly tell you that if you don't pay your tithe, God will not open the windows of heaven. And I'm still asking. I say one day when I meet Elon Musk, I will say, Have you ever come across the door in heaven? Talk about the window of heaven that will bring forth blessings. Funny. And this is what I tell my all my water members. There are some certain things you do. You don't even need to be a water member. Money will rain into your hands. Mm. You don't need to pay tight or do anything. Mm. You don't need to. But, uh, but what about um, now? So go and read the history of uh, David Oyedebo. People yeah. say he has suffered. Yes. Just tell us that you suffered. You are getting your payment. Finish. Don't say it's God's blessing. Because so, so what the man started from one church. So what do we call what do we call God's blessing? What do we, what do you call God's blessing? God's blessing is does it does not come free of charge. God does not bless people for free. So what is God's blessing? There is only one way mm. that you can get God's blessing for which free. Is, which is is when God wants to use you for something ahead. Mm. And that is why God will not tell you what he wants to use you for. And what is that thing that God wants to use you for? Okay. God wants to use you as a blessing in the lives of others. That's where we are saying, Akalaka destiny. You can be anything as long as the purpose is to be a blessing to humanity. Mm. And then God can preserve you. God can decide to bless you. But in that way, you must work for it. The Bible said, have you not seen the ants, how they gathered in dry season? And then you do that. You find out that at the end of the day, mm. if you don't plant, do you reap? No. People they don't want to plant. They want to stand by the and be waiting for that thing to come down. Okay, okay. You just you, you just said something about uh, you just said something about the video and um, you said um, in his days of little beginning he had a church. Um and you just also said something about planting and sowing. Don't you think in that time of little beginning was this time of planting? And this is a time of sowing everything he has planted. David Edubo owns a university. Okay. How many? Two. Good. Do I own a university? No, you don't. I do own yes, a university. Yes, yes, yes. You own a university, Lenford uh, University, and. Um, Do is an online college. It's an online college, yeah. And I made it compulsory. That every water member must undergo a course. Yeah. The idea is for them to do what? To have a knowledge. knowledge. Now, 
and I told them to pay a token because I realized that people will only value what they actually pay for. But either way, whatever thing they are going to pay cannot be up to 50% of what they will pay if they go to another online university. Mm. And so you, you are saying them they are paying just $10 or $20 for a course. Go online, you will see courses of $1,500. Now, you, somebody will say in a business, say, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Good. Somebody paid me $250,000 to do a ritual. Am I going to keep the money for myself? I was given the talent, the spiritual gift for free. What do I need in this life? Is a roof over my head, or man, a nice car to drive, food to feed you, my children, and those walking around me. I do not need a mansion that we have 100 rooms and I'm only sleeping in one, and my wife, you, and the other one is empty for friends to come and visit and stay. And so the remaining money that will come is enough for me to start building shelter for the homeless. And when I start building shelter for the homeless, you will be so heartless that you will not leave my shelter and you want to go to the church. When I know that, as we enter the shelter, you will see a cowrie in front and seashell. You say, ah, you live inside the water shelter. I say, yes. And you are going to church. They will say, now, now they do hypocrisy. You know what? You know what shop? You want to use it to share. You get it? You know what shop? But you want to use it to share. Let me tell you. Christians can begin to convert every Muslim to Christianity when they start building shelter. Majority of Christians that even leave, left Christianity for Islam is because one, one Allah you promised to give them money. And when you see a Christian going to Islam, say, ah, one Allah you don't promise you money. Why don't you promise them money for them to come to Christianity? Mm. Why don't you? You get it? Okay. So that's my take. We've talked about um, Muslims and um, we've talked about Christianity. Mm -hmm. And um, can I be comfortable? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. better. Free. Mm. Free. Um, <sighs> better like this. We've seen. We're coming to. We're com We're coming to the the place of your religion, mm. your newfound religion. Mm -hmm. We're coming to that place. We're not in a rush because mm. there are so many misconceptions. So many people don't understand why the water. Mm. So many, um, so many persons have, um, like I, I was trying to say, so many misconception about um, the use of carries, the use of beads, red coras, the use of seashell, the use of going to the beach to pray. It's looking demonic. It's looking like, um, it's looking satanic. Like my side will say, like the Ewos will say, it's an obanji. Mm. It's looking even your own people. Yes, even my own people. Mm -hmm. My in-laws. Even my in-laws. Even your own people Ooh. don't understand. And they say it's satanic. It's satanic. And it's demonic. It's demonic. It's fetish. Okay, good. So now, can you? We're, we're going to that. Mm. We've not come to that. Mm. We're going to that. Just put it at the back of your mind. Okay. We're coming to that. Um, like I said before, we've talked about being a Muslim. We've mm. talked about. A Christian, the Christian religion. We've mm -hmm. talked about the Muslim religion, and um, you've tried to explain to us, and um, so the the so the similarity between the both of them, similarity between Judaism um, and other religion. And thank you very much for all of that you've done for us. Now, um, can I ask you a question? Okay. Um, who was the first person that created a memory of God in you? Okay, the first person that created the memory of God in me was my mother, if I have to use that. Okay. But over the years, I've done a lot of research and I realized that even if my mother hadn't created the memory of God in me, I would still have known there is God. Okay, now... Um, the reason I asked you this question, mm. um, the first person that created the memory of God in you, because um, there was a situation, not in Nigeria, there was a situation, I think um, um, it should be in Europe, where a child 
was asked the same question. Who is God? And the child only knows Ronaldinho as God. That's the reason I'm asking you. That's what is bringing me to asking you this. Okay. The first person that created the memory of God. Now, if you look at Africa, every child, mm. every child is um, be given the memory of there is a God. But when you come to the Western world, so my atheist. Yes. Now, now you see the case of that child that said Ronaldo is God. Mm. I use one word. If my mother hadn't taught me. Mm. I would see have known there is God. I would see have known there is a force that is above, above me. Mm, mm. Now, what happened to that child was a distorted memory wow. of God. So his memory of God was distorted and changed by the mother. Whoa. And that is why I used to tell you, my children, I'm only going to teach them the true and pure definition of God. I'm not going to say God is in heaven. I can't limit God to be heaven. Neither am I going to limit God to be in the waters. But you know the, you know the idea? Mm. What cannot be created or destroyed? God. Okay. Let's go online and check it out. Okay. Let's just ask the internet. What cannot be created or destroyed? Mm? Are you on my screen? Mm. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Mm. What cannot be created? Good. You even gave me a suggestion or destroy. Matter makes up an invisible object in the universe and can be what neither created not nor destroyed. what destroyed. Now, something that cannot be created mm. or destroyed. It's called what? Energy. If these are Good. popping now, up, they are matter, all... Matter, yes. Matter according to physics. Physics. Matter according to physics is any substance that has mass and takes up space by having volume. Some people look at God as a matter. But a matter requires energy to exist. So energy is anything that cannot be what created nor destroyed what else has the same characteristics that cannot be created nor destroyed god god and so the only thing i want to teach my children is that there is something that is in charge of your breath that made the earth possible that made the water possible you can't create it it cannot be destroyed it has no beginning nor does it have an end mm. it's energy so now um if um, I don't understand, I um, I'm trying to get a clarity on this, on what you just said now. Mm. This is man ideology. Physics is man ideology to life. Then I don't, I don't know if you understand. Then God is man's ideology to what? Because you you you're giving us from an angle of physics mm. matter and energy let me ask a question okay. religion science spirituality which is the powerful spirituality is, is powerful. good religion teach you that god is in heaven yeah science teach you that god is everywhere yeah energy it cannot be created not be, destroyed. be destroyed it's yeah. responsible for everything that vibrates around us mm -hmm. spirituality teach you that God cannot be seen is the force that we call on to mm -hmm. and it makes things happen to what science also makes us understand that when you put up our wish there the moment our mind keep thinking about something I want this I want this that thing comes to materialization mm -hmm. but you know what religion does religion limits you from the power of your mind to the power of your action mm -hmm. and so they kill your mind and ask you to act a certain way which your mind should be the one that push you to act and so your mind is no longer your mind your mind is now being controlled and you start acting a certain way 
without getting the desired result. <laughs> Spirituality tell you that you are in control of your mind and your true essence. And because you are in control of your mind that when somebody wants to get you angry, you are relaxed. You breathe in. The outcome of that is peace. But religion tell you, no, don't do this. You cannot be insulted. You cannot insult Muhammad. You cannot insult Jesus Christ. You cannot insult this. And you want to defend what goes in, it leads to argument from argument to fight. If it does not lead to fight, malice. Mm. So religion is constantly controlling us. Spirituality is giving us the power to control. Science is giving us the power to control and make. Because I want to understand what thing has religion actually created. Nothing. Mm. Yet, the religious leader, they need a laptop to do their brainstorming, to save all the information they think they want. They need lights, they need camera. Science made that possible. Religion have never given us anything. And that is why in the water, that's by the fact that I'm a founder of religion. In my religion, we teach what is called common spiritual common sense. Don't expect that the spirit is going to bless you with wealth. I tell my members, everybody is not permitted to be rich. Religion will tell you that, Naomi, you know, God has destined you to be in Lagos, you know, to live in this beautiful apartment, this nice life. Who told you? It was not God, though. You think it was God that said both of us should marry? No. If when we were dating, I abused you, would you have married me? No. So your decision to make me your husband is why you are in this place. And you are in this place because the man you decided to marry is a man that have prospect for a life like this. And because you yourself, you have a prospect to live this kind of beautiful life also, there is a hidden vibration of energy that when both of us met, you had some appalling characters. I had some appalling character, but there was a spark of energy that attracted itself. For the prize I had, he laid his life down. For what we are not in control of. For one day, we never knew I was going to be in this apartment, but there is an energy that is aware of it. We did what? We connected and we are here. And that's why I tell you, and I tell you to teach my children. And what do you say? Thank you. And what is the prayer? For whatever thing responsible for where I am today. That I'm not under the bridge. Whoever you are, let me just call you the ancient spirit. Ancient signify old. Thank you. And that's why when, when you watch the secret, you say, Gratitude is a form of worship. Gratitude is not telling your member to come and give you money. No. Gratitude is that when I met with the bear, my life changed. Sir, God bless you. Take this. Even Jesus Christ said, Where are the remaining nine? Can I ask me another question? Okay. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. That was why you I married am. me. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> um, I'm trying to learn a lot from what I used to know. Uh, like I said before, you have to be open-minded for you to learn. If you're not open-minded, I swear to God. You will not learn. You will not if you just have to be this kind of rigid person that says no it must be this way you will le not learn and i will i will comfortably say that does not mean you're trying to be persuaded from what you know just be open-minded and learn and learn from all of this thank you very much and thank you my my people is that, my director. Is that deal? Eh? Is that all? No, 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 no. That's okay. not all. Don't thank them. Continue now. No, I, I'll, I'll be thanking them. Oh, um, Don't thank them. Time. Okay. They're under AC. Enjoy <laughs> themselves. 
Oh, thank you, my director. Thank you very much, Mr. Uziben. The reminder, thank you for your time. Now, um, I said we're coming to the place of asking you a question about the water religion. Um, the water religion started sometime last year, I think around June, July, if, I, if I'm being corrected. Yes. Um, that was when the water religion started. It started like a joke. It started. Um, I never knew it would get to this. I never knew it would get to where it is today. Mm -hmm. I thought it's something that will fade away, but uh, I'm seeing it like it's something that is growing stronger and stronger. Now, um, can you please enlighten my my viewers on why right. the water religion? Okay, why the watered religion? Do you know one of the things about energy I talked about? I did actually know you're going to ask that question. Mm. But look at what I was looking do, doing. Mm. Matter, the state of matter. Solid, liquid, and gaseous state. Yeah. Good. And what can exist in solid, liquid, and gaseous? Water. When it's frozen, it's solid. When there is heat. Let's come again. Hmm? I was just looking at you. Okay, good. What exists? It was blushing. I'm a spiritual leader. You don't do that. To okay. Me. Director. Okay. All right. Let's try. <laughs> okay, now your question is why watered religion? Mm, why? Now, if you remember when we were having this conversation, I said, I've been a sat satanist. When I mean, when I use the word, I've been a satanist, I'm talking about, I studied it about satanism. I practiced it. Yes, while in school, I practiced it. I was reading the books. I was going through everything. And I was a, a, a Christian before I, I went to the school. I, I became a Muslim. Every of this, there was only one thing I was programmed to be a Christian. Curiosity was what led me into Satanism, Buddhism, Islam, and Zoroastrianism. But in each of all of these, I realized that every one of it had a human influence on it and not pure, deep spiritual wisdom. Christianity is obvious, human influence. Islam is obvious, human influence. Satanism, human trying to think that the dark forces also should be respected or regarded. Zoroastrianism, human influence. Despite the fact that their separate prophets and spiritual leaders have what you call a deep sense and wisdom of the spirit, but over the age, things have changed. And I can tell you, 1,000 years from now, what I am teaching today, most people are not going to follow it again. Most water members are not going to follow it. They're going to bring their own interpolation. And then when that happens, God is still going to raise another prophet to remind them of what I have taught. And that's why I'm called the reminder. Now, the water religion came after I have explored so many possibilities. And I realized that my life was stagnant. And then, I woke up one morning and I went to the beach. Mm. And while at the beach, I, I look at the beauty of the waters. And I heard inside of me, prior this time, I'd have different revelations from Babalao, from Chris people, from prophets. I said, you have a calling. And those that know that their insight is not wide enough, they will say, God said you are going to be a pastor. And I would say, I know I'm a spiritual person. I'm not going to be a great man in the affairs of the spirit, but not as a pastor. But whatever it is, I don't know yet. Now it's becoming clearer. And so when I was by the sea, I looked at the beauty of the sea. And the next thing that dropped into my heart was, this is the manifestation of the essence of God. Mm. And every day that passes by, even today as I'm talking to you, another revelation came while looking at this computer. 
a solid a solid evidence why we say God is water. If science says that matter is something that cannot be destroyed nor created, and energy is something that cannot be destroyed or created, what do you think? In the water, we say the water is God. Not God we worship, but the essence through which God is being manifested. So the water is what? A matter. Mm. The water needs an energy to exist, to flow. That energy is what moves the wind to blow it, and there is a ripple. That energy is what made the water possible. Now, another energy is needed to add cold to it. It becomes solid. Another energy of it comes. Applied to it, it becomes what? Liquid. Okay. And then, you know what is this? Yeah. A diffuser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little science created it in a way that when it's being dispensed, it comes like air, but it's liquid. But also, do you also know that the air we have, we breathe here, have molecules mm. of water. Of course. So you find out that water is existing in three what? Stages. Liquid, Sorry. solid, and gaseous. And gas. What is matter? Define matter. What, what is, is matter? Matter. matter According to physics, classical physics and general chemistry, matter is any Anything substance that has mass and, and takes up space by having what? Volume. And we have four categories of it. Four categories of what? Matter. We have the solid, the liquid, the gas, and what? The plasma. You get it? But we have what? Three stages of what? Of it also. And so you can find out that when the water religion came, while standing by the sea, the insight came to me, not because I did physics. And I realized that water has so much power. And so, are you with me? You can find out that at the end of the day, almost every religion does not exist without water. You cannot become a Muslim without the ablution. You need the water. You can't become a Muslim. We can't become a Christian without what? Baptism. Baptism. You can't become a Zoroastrian without baptism. Do you know that if you don't undergo the water reincarnation, you cannot become a Satanist? Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. So you can see the presence of water in almost every human religious or spiritual ideology. And do you know that water now, scientific discovery have discovered that have carried some scientific um, experiment. They found out that water have the tendency to save. Meaning, as we are talking here, every body of water here is saving it. The air that has water, it's saving it. Yeah, I think I've seen something like that on the internet. Good. And so now, water have now the tendency to save information. And so an experiment was carried away by two water yeah. were placed in a place, in, yeah. in a jar. So and that. one was constantly being insulted you are a fool yes yes and they put rice inside and put rice here and one was constantly being said you are good and at the period of a month they brought it out the one that was constantly insulted became dark. darker yeah and why the one that was not just change color and the rest stuff and the fact that water that you constantly insult the crystal representation is different from the one that was constantly being blessed mm. and so when all science have proven it, religion have proven it, don't you think that the only best religion on earth today is the watered religion? And that's why I can boldly say the only religion you should actually belong to right now is the watered religion. It is the, it is the only religion that encompasses every other religion together. It is the only religion that tells you don't go and do sacrifice in the water. You are contaminating it. It is the only religion that if okay this week now i got a revelation that the month of april which is the fourth month of the water year will be a month of what of fasting and you need to see the revelation of how the fasting should be taken if you must ever eat all throughout the fasting period 
you're only allowed to eat what mm. the unliving bread that does not contain sugar or salt and science have you that when you fast your body is recreated people that fast they actually live longer mm. so that was what inspired the, the watered religion okay thank you okay. thank you very much okay um it's talked about um the religion the watered religion okay now um before the water religion started or let's say the beginning of the water religion you said something about um paying um a spiritual pain um for consultation pain um for spiritual work for spiritual work yes okay. pain for spiritual work but um right now I, what you mean is that when we started when i started mm. i was preaching against people who ask money money to do spiritual work, work. Okay. yes okay but right now what we what 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 i'm seeing and what my viewers are seeing on the internet is where you you put you pay um on a hundred thousand for the um the beads you pay you pay for um you pay for um for consultation so i i i, I don't i want to understand something are you trying to contradict what you said before or you're trying to validate it i don't get okay there was a case of a lady who was in abject poverty was suffering and i decided to make the bead i know what i'm wearing i know what is here and I gave her the bead. And when I gave her the bead, she was expecting the bead to do magic. And after seven days, he said, the bead not the work. Oh. The bead, just say this one, I, this bead not the work. Oh. And if I, I see they're hungry. And I ended the call on her. Oh. And then after that day, I put a price 10,000. And somebody went to borrow money to buy the bead. And in three days, gave me a testimony and other people that we that had the money that we were able to buy it they had no value for it mm. i increased it to twenty thousand. people still bought got their miracles other bought and did not get it mm. right now the bid is between fifty thousand and a hundred thousand mm. now i would say you don't need money to do spiritual work people will go to my church and say god gave you the spiritual work for free then i told one a lady on my on my TikTok messenger god gave you your life for free mm. as he gave all of us talent for free would you want to die run into the road to rescue somebody so that the, car, the trailer can kill you he said no say good <laughs> funny question you want me to use the gifts that god has given me that the same it's most christians so they are the ones saying that I said, good. Your Bible tell you that your gift and talent will make what? Wait, make wait. way for me. How will the talent make way for me when I cannot pay my rent in Aja? Mm. I'm in the Lucky. If you live in mainland and I'm living in Lucky Phase 1, come to see me. Is it not closer? If I tell you I'm living in Ekbe, you want to come from mainland to Ekbe? So, me living a big life moving down to the island to lucky phase one is also helping you mm. would you want would you believe me if i tell you buy this beat and your doors will be open mm. and i'm trekking mm. <laughs> and so they find out that they prefer to go and meet a babalawo that is in the village hungry to do money for them mm. and you that is that have the calling and you have the tendency to make them have the same money. They say, eh, and that money they look for. Mm. Because if I balance when they village, you know, this also they look for money. Okay. But you know, the, the aspect of spirituality is not something I don't I want to talk about today. I want to maybe one of the other podcasts we are going to have, we'll talk about that. Okay. But one of the reasons why I tell people to start paying now is because number one, you are my wife. Do I sleep in the night? No, you don't. Have I have I ever woken up in the night and i start praying for somebody that is not even aware of yes several times have you ever been attacked spiritually many times has my son ever been attacked spiritually many times we receive attack every day there was a case of a woman i took to the water to go and pray for and the spirit that appeared to me in the water to pray for the woman came visiting my wife and my wife called i said oh man I saw a yellow tall woman coming to meet me. 
exactly the same woman I saw in the beach while I took this woman to go and pray for. And I came and I said, you know, get this, but now my wife you go meet. You are a fool, you don't have sense. You know, they say even my wife said, now another Ogbeji spiritual person. And I warned her. And this is the first time my wife is even, is it not the first time you are even seeing me and you sit down and we are talking, we are in a place away from home? Yeah. Sometimes I will leave the house, I will not sleep in the house. Sometimes I will be at the beach. Sometimes I will leave the house in the morning and coming back 10, 11. Do you know what it means that you carry your wife and your child and members of your household and you are driving and you are sleeping on the stairy? And you are sleeping on stairy and somebody will say, hey, you are wicked for asking people to pay. You are not paying for the spiritual work. I still say spiritual work is free. But I don't want to die on time. Bring that in for me. Bring that in for me. Bring that other this thing from me. Yes. If I miss you. Yes. Yes. Bring it. Bring that jar. Don't worry. You can come in. You can come in. Good. Good. Medically, it's not advisable. Well, because I want to artificially boost. I started drinking this. Until last night, God gave me the, the vision of, what do you call it? The fasting. He said, it's not what you drink. He said, but when you even stop eating, it can renew yourself. And I went to the internet and said, hey, it's true. It's true. You can see, I have more than two in the house. I used to drink an energy bottle for 5,000 naira every three, three days. I started the water. We had over a million naira in our account. Right? Yeah. Piggy vest, Osusu, different bank. It, my wife was not saying, was thank God my wife know that I, don't, I know they spend money for gay. Say I get girlfriend outside. My wife would not be telling me, what did you spend this money for? How do I explain to her? That somebody called me all the way from all those states. So I would have loved to see you, but I don't have money to come. And I transferred 15,000 to the person to come and see me. And I took the person to the beach. And I paid for the person to, for prayers. And I paid for the person to stay in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I'm back to the house. You remember the case of the lady that even my phone spoiled? Yeah. And we have to even buy food for her to eat. And we gave her transport to come and see me. And transport to go back. I was now becoming poor in the name of happy people. I said, no, it cannot happen. When I, was, I was making money in dollars. Because my mind was not okay. If things happened. Things, I was doing spiritual work. All my business was shutting down. I was owing staff in, the water, uh, in, in, in Queen TV Africa. Lenfort was abandoned. Pro Lenit was abandoned. Fast work was shut down. In the name of going to the beach to the beach mm. and i was going down until i say no way no 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 if i want to do this spiritual work i'm talking about if i decide to shut the water that i don't want to do god work again i will be rich of course i will be rich in less than three months you guys know that i was doing comedy video before how much were, how much were we paying a thousand dollars seven hundred dollars one thousand five hundred dollars yes. some some months will take two thousand plus dollars we are we collecting almost 1.8 million naira on every month. People were paying me 500,000 naira for what? Website oh, building. Website building, yeah. And you think it's a uh, watered money I want to do? We were already living in Aja before I started the watered religion. Of course. I was living in a house of more than a million naira, more than 1.5 million naira. We are here in our. Um, in our um, vacation, this is our vacation home. You definitely once in a while you'll be seeing us here. This year we do our getaway. Do you know how much we spend here? Yesterday I I spent almost our expense money only for me. I I, I took those seashells. That's what I don't I don't want to talk about. And the reason why I've not come out to tell you how to actually call forth money from whatever thing you do in this life is because some of you we abuse it. Mm. Yes, they will abuse it. Mm. We, or maybe we went there with hundred and seventy thousand. 
the moment we are done buying all the bobo here and entering we went to a landmark it is something thousand we left there with almost one hundred and ninety thousand yeah. and this morning i woke up with two hundred and something thousand and i spent i have one forty something and i'm not before i will sleep my phone is off now i can tell you the moment this mo this mobile phone go live money don't increase again these are the secrets I want to tell a lot of people, but they don't understand. This is the beat. This is the beat that is doing it. God, the power of God in this particular beat. That's why I don't give it out. This will have its own work. Those of you on Yoruba, you know this type of beat. And the one you are going, with cowries. When we came to this house, is that not seashell there? I know what it does, cowries and seashell. But some of you don't know how to do it. So when I start asking people to pay me money because I know what I carry. Okay um thank you um now you talked about um we've talked about i asked you some questions and you've um enlightened okay continue i've asked you some questions and you, uh, you just enlightened me on that mm. and I, I i've been a part of it from from the beginning so yes. I, I understand from the angle of which you were talking you, you, from. you, you remember when i sprinkle water on you and five hundred thousand land your account <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I understand the the path from which you're coming from. Now, um, I want I want you to I want to say something, and I want you to throw more light on what I'm about to say. The truth is, um, there was a time somebody called you, and I was saying, <coughs> I don't have money. I think a young man, and you asked a question, what do you do? Now let me let me t let me tell let me tell you guys something. It's not about having the beat. It's about having what, what you to do. do. That's how because the God works. Many of us we don't have what we do, and want to get the beat. You can go as far as borrowing money to get the beat. And you don't have anything doing. The spirit will be. You're just a layout. The spirit will just be watching you. What should I touch for money to come? They are waiting for you to show them something to touch. Because the same Bible you read as a Christian said, I will bless the work of your hand. The bead is just a means for you to get a it catalyst easy. to fasting the reaction. For those of you who say So now. If because we're coming to a conclusion, I'm trying to conclude it from from my end before the reminder will say something about it. If you get this bead and you don't do anything, you're not doing anything. You don't. The bead cannot find something in your hand. God cannot find something in your hand. God cannot work for you. It's no magic. Right. Even if you buy all the beads. And you just put it in your house and you expect money to come to you. My dear, I'm sorry, it will not come. Oh, dear, dear. And that is why you say it's not working. It's no magic. It cannot work if you don't have something doing. And there's a testimony of a lady in the US. In the UK, you know the lady I'm talking of. I don't want to call okay, her name. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm coming. Okay. Uh, like I said, you have to conclude okay, every okay, of okay, this. Okay. It cannot work for you, my dear. You are a 19 year old boy, a 20 year old boy, 21 year old boy that's still supposed to be in school, maybe about graduating. You're still dependent. Your parents see pay your school fees. They see feed you, house you, clothe you. And out of the money they gave to you, you're buying this and expecting one spirit to come drop a million dollars in your house. Oh, gee. My dear, you are a thief. It cannot happen. You have to diligently go through school Learn, sit up, ask for wisdom to understand anything you're being taught in class, to come out better, 
to sit up, have a good grade, come out better. And when come after um after going through school, your NYC whatsoever, you pray to God to give you a good job. And in that job, God makes it easy for you if you're with this bid and with God. It made it easy for you, very easy for you. When I mean easy for you, it clears the path. It, yes, it clears the path. Where people try to struggle for promotion, it comes easy. Your because envy just seals, seals your work and you get it. Let me, let me say something. And These bees have spirits. And so, as a human being, there are always going to be an anti-progressive spirit around you. Mm. It is what these bees remove. So, when you are moving, the world becomes easier for you. Um, 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 I, I know many of you will be saying, why, why the emphasis on the bead? But um, there are so many people that progress without the bead. Yes, they, they are. There are so many people that progress without the bead. But those so many people that progress about, without the bead, like you come to Christianity, they'll tell you, pay your tithe. You can't be paying, your, you can't be paying tithe and you're not doing anything. And you expect God to bless mm. you. It's the same thing with this. You pay tight and you're not asking God, rain the showers of blessing upon me. It can't work, my dear. You will be paying that tight for years and nothing will happen to you. And let me say something. This is very funny. Mm. Even people, when they do prostitution, hmm? people who even do as a professional work and it's not it's not um it's not a crime here in nigeria if you are if you are doing it in a in a excluded this thing i say ah, why do you want to say i want more men i say ah. anyway whatever thing you want it to do for you it will do for you mm. whatever thing you want to do for you do for you and actually she bought it mm. and not only did she get it, she actually got according to her mm. she's not in the country actually and the doors actually open for her you say mm. ah, sir the place I used to go and they just give me like five pounds, ten pounds. Mm. The man gave me hundred pounds, three hundred pounds. He said, He wants to set up a business for me. Said, yeah, you your bid is working. I said, Now, you know what the bid is trying to do? The bid I've carried it to somebody who can give you money to set up yourself. Can you set yourself up, focus on your life, and quit that job for now? He said, yeah, I won't think about it. <laughs> Not think about it. <laughs> so let me. Can I say something? Okay, now now? yes, you can say something. All right. Thank you very much for this beautiful. My conclusion is this: love your neighbor, mm. love yourself, mm. but above all, love yourself, because the way you love yourself is how the environment reacts to you and because you love yourself if the environment reacts negatively towards you you are able to what withdraw yourself back and the more you withdraw yourself back the environment will realize that this person does not want this so they will start rearranging themselves in a positive way to create impact for you and for those of you who believe in what i teach I can assure you that the goal is to live a life that our children's children will look up to and they will say, truly, our father, our mother lived a life that we can emulate. Yeah. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, the reminder. Thank you for your time. Thank you, my director. <laughs> Thank you, my, director my director Maro. Thank you very much. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.